Hey Rabbits, it's Dixie and today I want to find out how much soul the German language has. By that I mean that I will present very beautiful and unique German terms to you that contain the word soul, Seele. When I researched for this video, I was surprised myself how many of these words there are and in how many different situations they are used. The human soul appears to have an essential role in the German language, used to express various emotions and phenomena such as happiness, sadness, fear, friendship, loneliness, and kind-heartedness. So I hope that you will be as amazed as I am by how the soul is a part of such a large number of German words and by what they mean. But first of all, what is the soul, die Seele in German? It's the entirety of everything representing a person's mindset, feelings and personality. In German you can also use seelisch as an adjective describing everything concerning the soul, which in my opinion is a nice addition to simply say emotionally or mentally. Now moving on, the first three words I want to talk about are a set of words that describe a soulmate. In German a soulmate is not called Seelenfreund or Seelenkumpel, he or she is called Seelenverwandter, Seelenverwandte, literally meaning soul soul relative. And I like this a lot more since a soulmate is not just a buddy. It feels like you're the same blood, two bodies sharing the same soul. So I feel like the German term nails it pretty perfectly and the English term is a bit of an understatement. You know, a mate is someone that you play with after school, that you go to the movies to or have a drink with after work. A relative, on the other hand, is someone that belongs to you, that is somewhat part of you. That's how close you are. But that's not even all. There's also an adjective, Seelenverwandt, soul related. And if you want to describe the whole phenomenon, you can call it die Seelenverwandtschaft, the soul relation, the soul kinship. So not only is soul relatives a much more beautiful term than soul mate, there are also three words to describe the whole thing. Like this is such a magnificent bond that people can feel. We need a noun for it, we need a title to call this person and an adjective to make sure that people can express this amazing feeling in many different ways. German is harsh, edgy and aggressive. Sure. Next up, another adjective that I truly love. It's called Mutter Seelen allein, and it means all alone. The literal translation would be mother soul alone or mother soul lonely. And again, this word has such a bittersweet message. There is a story that this word tells you. The love of a mother knows no boundaries. Even a serial killer has a mother that cannot stop loving him, even though she knows what he did and she despises it. A mother's soul is with her child, no matter where it is and no matter what this child does. So in a place where not even your mother's soul is present anymore, you're truly lonely. You're truly lost. Another word or more or less job title that contains Seele is der Seelenarzt or der Seelendoktor. The soul doctor. I don't think I have to explain who that is. And even though this word is not that commonly used and many people would maybe use it with a negative connotation, I think it's a bit nicer than saying the psychotherapist or der Psychotherapeut. I've never really liked that term. Psychotherapist sounds like a therapist for, well, psychos. I may need help, but I don't want to be called a psycho. And secondly, there is this thing about therapists looking a lot like the rapist, so I'm pretty happy that German offers an alternative. Ah, 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 we're not quite done talking about psychotherapists yet. You could also use the term Seelenklempner, soul plumber. I know you like what? But let me tell you why I love this word. I like this picture that being mentally ill is like leaking from your soul. I don't know exactly what you're leaking, maybe it's just happiness dripping out of you. So you need a plumber to fix you and seal you again. I admit that soul plumber sounds a bit like a word you use to explain the world to children. You know, little Cindy, grandpa has a hole in his soul. He goes to a doctor that tries to fix it so he can be happy again. But I love it particularly for this fact. When you go through tough times, you sometimes feel like a child. What you need is simplicity, someone explaining things to you in an almost motherly way. I know that the word Seelenklempner is often used in a negative fashion, but if you see it from this perspective, I think it has a certain beauty to it. Let's continue with another linguistic jewel of the German language, the word die Seelenruhe, the soul calmness. There's also an adjective for it, Seelenruhig, which means like calm souled. These two words mean that you are calm to the core. You are oh, relaxed. 
There may be people or problems trying to disturb your inner peace, but it's like you have a protective shield all around you and nothing can do you harm. You are a Jack Johnson song. Something similar to this is the word Seelenfrieden, soul peace. It's the kind of peace that you feel when you're very old. You know your time has come, but you're not sad or you're not frightened of death because you know that you did everything that you wanted to do. Your beloved ones are taken care of, they're fine. You achieved most of your life goals, lots of beautiful memories in your head. You made mistakes, yes, but you stopped regretting them since they led you to where you are. And you simply feel that it's okay to go. Your soul is at peace. It's a bit sad, I'm sorry, but I hope that at the end of my life I feel exactly that. Then there are two more adjectives I want to tell you about. Seelengut and Seelenstark. To be a good soul or a strong soul. The first one is similar to Herzensgut, good-hearted, to have a good heart. While the second one means that you may not be physically strong, but you have a powerful, courageous mind, that you are a good person. I really like these two, because they tell me that not only muscles can change the world. But we don't always feel strong. We also tend to feel weak sometimes, for example, when we experience fear. The German word Seelenangst, soul fear, describes a fear that we feel deep down in our soul. You know, there are these daily life fears like, oh my! What if I don't find a parking spot? But a soul fear is something way more intense, like the fear of death or the loss of a loved family member. But let's go back to something more positive. I really like the German word Seelenvergnügt. It means happy soul, to be with a happy, cheerful soul. This means that you are thoroughly happy. You're in such a good mood from head to toe that your soul shares it. Your whole life is in balance and something inside of you cannot stop singing and giggling. Now comes another set of three words that describe things that help you through rough times. Der Seelentrüster, the soul comforter, is a person that is good at comforting people, a good listener. It can also describe an alcoholic drink though. I guess depends on what kind of person you are. The one that seeks help or the one that gets drunk. Der Seelenwärmer, the soul warmer, is a pullover or jacket that's just so cozy and warm that you feel protected both physically and mentally. And last but not least, die Seelennahrung, the soul food, which doesn't only describe something to eat. It can basically be anything that makes you feel better. Maybe a book, chocolate, a poem, a song. Just imagine you were going through dark times and you had to neglect your own feelings for a while, so your soul has grown thin and is all weakly. What it needs is soul food and energy. So you take time for yourself and do things that make you as a person happy. The last word I want to present to you today is die Menschenseele, a human's soul. It's a term for another person, mostly used in a negative way when you're lonely and there is no one around. Ich war ganz allein. Keine Menschenseele weit und breit. Again, the absence of another soul is used to emphasize the desperate feeling of pure loneliness. I don't know about you, I hope you feel the same way, but I personally love this kind of video. It makes me recognize that there is so much poetic depth in the German language, so many secrets to reveal and treasures to be found. Can you think of more German words containing soul, die Seele? And if you speak another language, how much soul does that language have compared to German? I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If so, please leave a thumbs up because that would make me really, really happy. Seelenvergnügt, to be precise. If you want to watch another video of Don't Trust a Rabbit, you can find one right here. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook or even support the channel on Patreon, which would mean so, so much to me. Now I wish you all a very beautiful day. Be seelenstark. You all are my Seelenklempner and I hope that we see each other in my next video. Bye!